I thought I'd start with a little bit of history because it's a story about how Microsoft got to this, the launching of this program in November 2008. It's, it's quite a cool story, I think. But I'd say that I work at Microsoft. <laughs> so to begin with, I'd like to rewind back to the early days of Microsoft. And I love that photo. It's quite fun. Um, and, and I'd like to think about it in a way that you've not heard it before. You see, Microsoft isn't actually a story of just a few players. It's actually a caravan of characters driven by a common dream around realizing the potential of the microcomputer and how to capitalize on it. So the success story is very simple. Along the way, they created part of what I'm going to call as the network or the innovation network. Um, it wasn't a set of goods and services. It was actually what made Microsoft unique was Bill Gates' vision of creating a platform and allowing people within that network to develop on that platform. And it's about a customer ecosystem and technologies that are driven, you know, as a part of that. Oh, this clicker's not working. <laughs> and this is what I would say is truly the advent of Microsoft and our vision. It's been that way ever since. Um, so what is our philosophy? When your corporate vision includes being an enabled platform provider, it, it's about you've got to create the means for others to um, create or innovate along that platform. And if you focus on products, it's hard to envision an ecosystem that grows based upon those products. Our view was and con continues to be, um, let's welcome everyone into this ecosystem and let's create and innovate together. So just to give you an idea of some of the kind of products that we're working on right now, I think the one to really call out is .NET. And what that is, it's actually giving people the tools and the toolkit they need to continue to innovate on their platform. And this really is the basis of, our, uh, of us. And what I would say is the d business unit that I belong to, which is called Developer and Platform Evangelism, it is very much about using these tools and these building kits to encourage developers and new companies to actually build and innovate alongside us. So really, this is the fundamental of where we're coming from. And um, it's the foundation, is what I would call it. So why do I bring this up? And it's, imp number one, because it's actually important for established companies, you know, even ones as large as Microsoft, to actually not forget their roots. And, you know, that's a message I put to all of you out there. Um, I think no successful venture ever has taken place, at least in our view, that doesn't uh, partner or rely at one point or another, you know, with other aspiring individuals making the most of what they can as an ecosystem. And at Microsoft, these twin ideas of entrepreneurship and inclusion have been with us since the beginning. And what I'd say is we're a company of entrepreneurs. I certainly am. Um, this year, I have my own budget. Uh, I always have had my own budget, but it's actually quite funny. It's 30% less than it was last year, uh, but I have to still grow my business 15 to 20%. So I have to be an entrepreneur, and I have to bootstrap, and I have to innovate to grow my business in ways um, you know, that I wasn't able to before. And, and that really pervades throughout the entire company. Um, we're a company of innovators, is what I'd like to say. And since our founding, you know, part of that mission has been to help entrepreneurs succeed. Don't believe us? <laughs> Do you think we've gotten beyond that? I'd like to highlight three incredible entrepreneurs and innovators within Microsoft. First, we've got Kim Cameron. Kim is Microsoft's chief architect of identity. He joined us a decade ago when we acquired um, Zoomit Corporation. And he spent years perfecting and inventing meta, um, <clears throat> excuse me, meta directory technologies that secure identities on the web. And he's propelled Microsoft to the forefront of security and identity conversion. And we'd be remiss if we didn't give him um, credit for that. The, the second one, Ray Ozzie, I think most of you know as the founder of Lotus Notes. Um, then he w went on after selling Lotus to IBM, founded Groove Networks and then Microsoft acquired Groove Networks. Now, the great story about Ray is when Bill, Bill G, as we all affectionately refer to him, Bill went off to do his Gates Foundation with Warren Buffett. We were left with a massive hole. Who is going to be our chief technical architect? And Ray, as the chief innovator, he's taken that role. 
And I must say, he's taken that role in a fantastic way. He's really driven some of the changes that we've gone through in the last three to five years. So for example, our move to the cloud, Ray was at the forefront pushing the execs, pushing Steve, saying this is where we need to be, this is where we need to go. And this is about supporting people at that level on innovation. I also can't forget Bill Buxton. He's the entrepreneur in the human-computer interaction ecosystem. Um, again, Bill is he's a legend in the agencies and, des and web design space. Everybody knows who he is, and everybody loves hearing him speak. He's a principal researcher at Microsoft, and what I would say is we're lucky to have all three of these. And you know, if you, if you carry on with that, we've got Microsoft research facilities around the world. Uh, for me, one of my favorite things is taking people to MSR, as we call it, so Microsoft Research, in Cambridge. And what they're doing there is exploring and learning technologies and delivering innovations that are five to 10 years out. And it is phenomenal to see what they're doing. And we do hire the best and brightest minds. And to give you an idea of the kind of money we spend on innovation, $9.5 billion a year. It's a lot of money, but the whole point is, without that kind of spend on innovation, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. And if you ever do get a chance to meet a Microsoft employee, and there happens to be a Microsoft research facility in the country, it's absolutely well worth a visit. It's just fantastic. I really enjoy going to Cambridge, um, if only to be in awe of the brilliant brains that are there. Um, so Kim, you know, and Ray and Bill are great examples of what it means when we say we've actually never left our roots, you know, but what is it that makes an entrepreneur? And why do I keep talking about entrepreneur and the network and innovation? It, it's not just invention, it's actually the ability to come up with the new technology processes and our products. And it's this word that we've sort of focusing on all day today, innovation. It's actually the ability to bring those things to market and create a proper business about it. But this can only be achieved at the right times, at the right place, in the right cultures. So this is one of my favorite slides. Some of the best companies are actually born in a downturn. So you can just, if you can actually see some of the logos, you can see innovation does, this is a historical view, but some of the best innovation does occur in those down times. But actually what's most important is about the conversation today and where we have been in the last two to three years. You know, we're in a period where accelerated innovation is not only possible, but it's actually accelerated by the network. And I know at the speaker's dinner last night, we're having a fantastic conversation about, it actually doesn't matter where you set up your company, the net and social media, uh, you know, and the way communications go today, it enables you to set up a company anywhere, anytime. And the necessary element, and I, we believe it's a necessary element of driving the global economy through the current crisis. So, quote up there for you to read. But I think the comment we'd make here is if, inf inf if invention is the discovery of a new idea or process or technology, innovation is the ability to bring that discovery to market in a meaningful way and in a compelling way. It's innovation that's the key. And that's including funding and supporting the innovation which separates the good ideas from those that aren't. Now, why do I talk about all this? It's because it's about entrepreneurship and innovation. It's about jobs for people. It's about growth of industries and the ability of local and national governments to provide education and infrastructure that spurs even more growth. And the scorecard is actually more than just financial results. It's seeing a vision that's going to actually make an impact. So we are, we believe, in an age of entrepreneurship. And the reason I bring up all this historical stuff it's because it's this thinking and this journey that led us to the creation of the BizSpark program. So again, this is a very fun slide. The last 10 years in particular has been very fascinating. We've watched the net explode. Um, we've watched the world grow significantly smaller. Um, and it's just made the overall opportunity for all of us even bigger. And it's caused us to focus on our core and the fundamentals about how we you know, for us at Microsoft or for yourselves as corporates or even small companies can focus on driving that. So last bit of history, generations of Microsoft. So first generation of Microsoft 
we're talking about were built on, were built on the desktop. The second generation was really geared towards enabling the enterprise and becoming a player in the enterprise market. And I'm sure many of you have dealings with, you know, the Microsoft Sweden team in terms of signing these wonderful large um, agreements uh, for, you know, using your software to enable your enterprise and your information workers. But now we're actually in what we feel is the third generation of Microsoft. And it really is about, um, enabling those one billion Microsoft customers, be they consumers, be they enterprise. And it's about our vision of what we call three screens in the cloud and building our technology and your technology and entrepreneurs' technology to enable you to have any device, will have your information anywhere on any device, anywhere, anytime. And a great scenario for that is um, I'm watching a movie at home on my Xbox and I click pause and then I actually get on to the bus to go to work, but I can actually go on my mobile and click play and continue to watch the movie where I was, where I'd left it off on the Xbox. Then I can get to the office and uh, continue to watch the movie or, or documentary or whatever. And that scenario actually does exist. It's very, very cool. And you'll see with the uh, launch of our Windows Phone 7, which was earlier this week, no doubt you heard some of the splash, this scenario is, it, it, it is true. It, it absolutely is, because all the data resides in the cloud, and it doesn't matter what device you use, you know, um, this network and this innovation allows you to access it.